Hey, what's going on? Mike Edleski here. Uh, Deathless Performance. It's the first video. I'm going to have up on the website and stuff. I should talk about two, two really, really, really easy concepts, but a lot of people just mess them up like crazy. I'm going to talk about some uh, just load error problems with the bench press that you'll see a lot of going into regular gyms or even the training young athletes and stuff. You, you know, everyone, everyone knows the correct setup for the most part. If you've stumbled upon here by accident. That's pretty much the most meat-headed thing you could ever want to talk about. But uh, So everybody knows a good setup on the bench press, you know, shoulder blades nice and tight together, riding up on back of your neck, top of your traps, uh, lots of leg drive, keeping your butt on the bench. Uh, so I mean, everyone, everyone's got a general idea of how to set up, but a big problem is that that setup might be happening at the wrong point in the lift. So uh, I'm going to change the camera angle here, and then I'm going to go ahead and show um, a, a, a a loading error problem in the bench press. Then I'm going to show how to correct it, and then what a good loading pattern would be to get set up for the bench press to press the most weight possible. Then uh, after that, I'll talk a little bit about just foot position, how to actually use leg drive, and a huge, huge bench press mistake you see all the time. This is like competitive power lifters and athletes and just recreational gym enthusiasts and stuff screw this up so bad and you're cutting just tens of twenties of fifties of pounds off your bench press. So that one was a, it was demonstrating a load error problem. So what what I did incorrectly was, you know, got set up, got kind of tight, you know, in my back, uh, pushing through my feet a little bit, getting the setup. But the first thing I did when I take the bar out is press the bar out, and then I all of a sudden have to, you know, I've taken out all this all this tension that I've created in my upper back. This big shelf I, I've created to bench off of is now flattened out, and now range of motion is extended and everything and uh, you're just super internally rotating your shoulder which is not good. So uh, the the actual load error was pressing the bar out and now all of a sudden I have to get back into my setup under under load. So if you're using a heavy weight, you know you're you're gonna be losing uh you're gonna be losing a ton of tension in, in your back and that's gonna be stability in the bottom and the top of the press, which means you're probably gonna miss a heavy press if you're not as tight and as stable as you can possibly be. So uh Next up, I'm just going to show how to correct. Uh, I'll show, I'll just show the example of how to correct it first, and show what a good bench press looks like, then explain exactly what I did to go ahead and fix that up from the from the load error that you just saw. So the biggest difference between uh, the, the first bench press, the load error problem, and the second one was, uh, well, really, really two things. All of the tension that I maintained throughout all three reps were developed before the bar was taken out of the rack. So the only way you can actually, you know, keep your shoulder blades tight, keep your scapulas pressed together nice and retracted is to imagine taking the bar and actually dragging it out of the rack as opposed to just pressing it straight up. This will also get your scapulas into a uh, into more of a depressed position and or it's almost as if you know they're just set on top of your lats and that's going to create a much a much higher point to bench from number one and then a much more stable position to bench off of. It's a difference between benching on a, a Tempur-Pedic mattress and you know a slab of concrete. The transfer of force is going to be a whole lot more through a slab of concrete than it is on you know a big big sheet of memory foam or whatever. So I'm going to show you real quick uh, again how to fix the load air problem, uh, what it looks like taking that, taking the bar out of the rack, and then what it looks like uh, when when you do it the correct way. So here's the wrong way first. So like I did on the first one, pressing the bar up, and then bringing it out, shoulder blades together afterwards. And I'm never exactly. I'm never exactly in the best possible position because a lot of that tension is lost re-establishing like a, a solid a solid setup and a solid loading pattern. So to fix that problem and to have a solid loading pattern, get set up first. Everything is tight from here and drag the bar out of the rack. 
and that way you maintain it's a lot easier to hold on to the tension uh, number one and you won't have to waste the energy and the extra time and it's it's crucial under a heavy weight to you know get the lift done as fast as you can uh, so that extra time spent wiggling around underneath is just energy burned and pounds lost off your bench press